This is section 8.6 from Math 99, and we are going to talk about functions. And in order to talk about functions, we need to talk about uh, relations, which are basically relationships in math. Functions are a type of relation. Um, a relationship is anything that ties some input to some output. So it could be um, a collection of points. It could be... Um, an input-output table. We'll talk about all of them. But a relation is actually a pretty boring thing. It's just some collection of some inputs and some outputs. So for example, if I had um, the equation y equals 10 minus 5x, and let's say that I, um, I'm going to limit my x values, they have to between, be between 0 and 20. Remember, I can write this this way. I can also write it that way. Those mean the same thing. So let me think about this. Um, I could start to make a table. I could just pick some values like 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. Now I can't go lower than 0. I can't go higher than 20. And I know that I'm skipping some values in here, you know, because 1 works. You know, 1's between 0 and 20 or 5.7 or 11.09328 or whatever. I'm just getting kind of a shape of it. So let me plug in 0 for this. Uh, that would mean that 10 minus 5 times 0, 10 minus 0 is 10. If I plug in 5, that would be 10 minus 5 times 5. Uh, 10, um, sorry, 10 minus 25, negative 15. Uh, or if I plug in 10 for this, that'd be 10 minus 50, so it'd be negative 40. And as I, uh, as I go in, I, I plug in these other values, and I'm going to get some answers for it as well. And again, all I have here is some sort of uh, collection of points. That would be a negative 65. That would be a negative 90. So notice that my, my inputs, my x values, I'm already told what they go from. They go from 0 to 20. My y, my outputs, seem to go from 10 to negative 90. So I could write something like negative 90 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 10. You know, I could write it this way, negative 90 to 10. So I have this collection of inputs and I have this collection of outputs. Graphically, um, this thing starts at about 0, 10. And if I go all the way out to 20, it goes way down here. And I'm not doing this to scale, but let's say this is negative 90. So I have this value of x's from 0 to 20. And notice how the line just kind of like uh, the x values, it kind of collapses onto it. If I, if I think about like collapsing it in this direction, it collapses onto that. That tells me what all my possible inputs are. And if I... Uh, Look at my outputs, it goes from 10 to negative 90, or from negative 90 to 10, whichever way I want to talk about it. Those are my possible outputs. Now this idea of outputs and inputs, it relates to um, something we want to talk about with, with, uh, with functions and relations, is the domain and the range. So the domain is all the inputs. or the x value. The range is all the outputs. Or the y values. I know this next thing I'm going to say is not mathematical at all, but it's one way to help you remember it. Uh, alphabetically, d comes before r, i comes before o, x comes before y. Again, there's nothing mathematical about that at all, but it's a nice, convenient little uh, little way that we could remember domain and range connected to input, output, x's, and y's. So that's one idea of a relation. A relation can be a gra it can be a graph where I can look at my domain and I can look at my range, just a collection of points. I could just think of it as this collection of. Uh, of inputs and outputs. So I could say, for example, I have some inputs and I have some outputs. 
So for example, um, if you think about buttons on a vending machine, I could have like an A button, a B button, a C button, a D button. If I push A, it spits out a certain drink, like a Coca-Cola. Or if I spit out a B, it spits out a Coke as well. If I if I push C, it spits out a Seven Up. And if I uh, if I push D, it spits out some beet juice. This is a this is a, a relation as well. Remember, it's relating a collection of inputs to a collection of outputs. And if I think about my domain and my range for this relation. Um, my domain is just going to be the collection of my inputs. So it's A, B, C, and D. That's set. And then my range would be my collection of outputs. It'd be Coke, 7-Up, Beet Juice. So these relations, they're just a collection of inputs and outputs. So notice that here I have this collection of inputs, this collection of outputs, and I know how they're related to each other. A is related to Coke, B is related to Coke, etc. So I could also uh, list a relation another way. I could list it as a combination of ordered pairs. So if I was doing that with, with this picture right here, I would say if A is the input, Coke is the output. Or if B is the input, Coke is the output. Similarly, C, to C goes to 7-Up, and D goes to Beet Juice. And notice that our domain and range, our domain is just that collection of those input values, and our range is just the collection of the possible output values. And if it happens more than once, we don't have to repeat it. We can just say that happens. Let me do another list, another list of a relation. I could have something like a 5, 7, 6, 3, 5, 12, 8, 9, 3, 0, 2, negative 8. So there's some collection of inputs and outputs. Now, when I'm talking about a relation, I don't necessarily know how they're related. You know, how I get from 5 to 7, 6 to 3. I, there, there might not even be a rule. Um, but that's okay. It's still a relation. But for this relation, if I wanted to list its domain and its range, and just do it as a set in this case. So my domain is going to be, let's see, it, you typically you can list them in ascending order. So you might want to go like which one's smallest to which one's largest. You don't really have to do it this way, but I'm going to. So... My domain would be the elements two, three, uh, five happens twice, so I only need to list it once, six, and eight. And then my range would be, I got negative eight, I've got a zero, I've got a three, seven, a nine, and a twelfth. So there's an idea of, if I was given it as a set, how I could list domain and range. So again, this idea of a relation, just a collection of inputs and outputs. They're somehow related to each other. Sometimes I know how they're related to each other. Sometimes I don't. Great, so now we know what a relation is. So let's get at what a function is. A function is a type of relation. I'm going to erase a little bit, and then we'll, uh, we'll talk about it. Great, so a function. A function is a relation, so it's a type of relation, where each input um, is paired to exactly one output. In other words, um, if, I, if I have an input it's only going to give me one output answer. It's consistent. It never gives me multiple output answers. So an example of something that isn't a function, I could draw it. Let's go back to maybe that, that vending machine idea, input, output. So if I press A, I get Coke. That's OK. Um, if I press B, 
I get a 7-up. If I press C, I get beet juice. Um, but if I press D, sometimes it gives me beet juice and sometimes it gives me Coke. So notice that this one input right here, this, this D input, is linked to two outputs. So this is an input that is not only to one output. It goes to multiple outputs. That means that this relation would not be a function. It only is a function if D only went to one thing. Like I say, D only goes to B juice. Now it is a now it is a function. Here's another example that we could kind of get at. I have some machine, and this machine, if you put in a um, a person's name. It somehow, I don't know what it does, it violates people's privacy and somehow re relates the, um, the name of that person's bio mom, the, 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 the woman that actually, uh, that actually birthed that person. Notice that's a function because if I plug in a name, there's only going to be one answer here. That is a function. But if I had a machine that worked the, the opposite direction, say, in other words, it takes in um, a, a woman's name or any name, and it spits out um, anyone that that woman gave birth to. It's still a relation, but it's, it's not a function. And the reason why it's not a function um, would be, for example, my family, if you put in my mom's name, um, Linda, it would spit out my name, and it would also spit out my sister's name. So there's an input that has multiple outputs. So that is not, not a function. All right, so functions, one input to one output. Let me do a little bit of erasing. And then I'm going to get some examples on here, and we can decide if they're, if they're functions or all right, so these uh, these magically appeared. So let's take a look at this first one. So first off, the domain of this is five. Oh yeah, I was going to do them in ascending order. So four. Remember the domains, the inputs: five, eight, and ten. The range for this is uh, three, six, seven, nine. So there's my domain. There's my range. Now, is it a function? And it looks like all of my inputs are unique. So five goes to three, four goes to seven, eight goes to nine, 10 goes to six. No input goes to multiple outputs. So yes, this is a function. So I can tell from the list, you know, there's, there's no repeated inputs. There's no input that goes to multiple outputs. Great, so let's do this next one then. And I notice that, let me list my domain and range. I'm often gonna have to do that anyways. My domain is uh, three, four, five, oh, and I forgot two, two. My range looks like it is six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so let me think about this thing. Five goes to seven. Three goes to nine. Four goes to eight. So far it looks great, but look what happens. Now five, I already have five going to seven, but five also goes to six. This is not a function. Because this five, went to two places. There's an input that is that is connected to multiple outputs. And even though I had two also go to nine, that's fine. That doesn't violate anything. This is the thing that gives me trouble. So not a function. Let me check this. The third one. Let's see. My domain is uh, three... 
6, 10, 12, 15. And my range is 7. Everything goes to 7. The question is, is that a function? Well, let's see. 12 goes to 7. 3 goes to 7. 6 goes to 7. 10 goes to 7. 15 goes to 7. Now notice um, each input goes to the same place, but that's okay. Um, this direction is the only direction that matters. It, no input goes to multiple outputs. So we're good. This is a function. Yes, it's a function. So the only time that we get something that's not a function is when an input goes to multiple outputs. When there's an X associated with multiple Y. So now we've talked about how to um, how to determine if something's a function or not, looking at the collection of points, looking at it in a set, how to find its domain and range. Let's talk about it on a graph too. So I'm going to put a couple of graphs on here. And let's say this is negative 3, 3, 5, and 2. It does something like this. So then I have another shape that looks like this, where this is up here at the point uh, 2, 5. This is the point 2, um, negative 2. This could be the point 3, 1. And this could be the point 0, 1. So I want to one, I'm wondering about are each of these graphs functions, and uh, I also want to know the domain and range of them, regardless of if they're functions or not. So this first one, as I do domain and range, um, if I'm looking at the domain, remember the domain's the inputs. So I'm just thinking about where this thing would it, like if the whole thing were to collapse onto just straight onto the x-axis. Where would it overlap? I notice it goes from negative 3 to 3. So there's there's a couple ways I could write this. One of this is in this, this notation, just negative 3 to 3. Um, and then it, notice if I'm looking at the, the y's, it, the highest it goes is 5, and the lowest it goes is negative 2. So its range, I could say it goes from negative 2 to 5. Another way to write this, I'm not going to make a big deal about this, is x is such that negative 3 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 3. I just, I like that. You don't have to give me the whole funky set notation. So you could either write it this way, or you could write it that way. This, if I was being formal, would be y is such that negative 2 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 5. Really, that part's enough. So now my question is, is this a function? Remember, a function is such that uh, each input is matched to exactly one output. So if I think about the inputs and the outputs on this thing, here's an x value, and it's linked to a certain y value. Here's another x value, and it's linked to a y value. And I could go through and just make a bunch of lists. Given this x, this is the y that matches up to it. So what I'm what I'm doing is I'm taking um, a vertical line like this, and I'm just making sure that it touches it only once in each of these spots. And it does. If it touched it more than once, it wouldn't be a function. But since it only touches it once, I can say yes, this is a function. Let me do that with this circle though. Notice if I go through here. For example, that input is associated with two different outputs. It's associated with the output that's here and the output that's here. So I would say, no, this is not a function. By the vertical line test. Take the vertical line test across here. It only touches it once at all those places. So yes, 
this one is a function by the vertical line test. So vertical line test is my tool for telling if a graph is a function. All right, let me go back now and do domain and range for these other two graphs too. So domain and range for this one, notice that uh, for the domain, it goes from zero to three. Like it doesn't get any wider than that. So I could write my domain as either the set zero to three, or I could say zero is less than or equal to X, which is less than or equal to three. Uh, same thing, similar thinking with my range. My range is my Y's, my output. The highest it gets is five. The lowest it gets is negative two. So my range is negative two to five. Or I could say negative two is less than or equal to Y, which is less than or equal to five. Great. Last one, for, for domain for this, the furthest left it gets is, that should be a negative, negative three, and the furthest right it gets is three. So my domain goes from negative three to three. And I could also write that as negative three is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to three. For my range, that's my outputs, the lowest it gets is negative 2, and the highest it gets is positive 2. Boy, I messed up on that point, didn't I? So that means my range goes from negative 2 to positive 2, or negative 2 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 2. So give these a try, practice finding those domains and, domain and ranges, telling if things are a function or not. And then the next, uh, the next chapter that we're going to work on is doing some manipulation. The manipulation will be using, using functions. So we will uh, we'll start to do some calculations. And things like this. But for now, be able to recognize them, be able to identify the domain and the range. All right. Uh, like always, please email me with those questions.